Hi everybody, I'm Jaron Davis with Collablog, that's C-O-L-L-A dot blog. I'm coming to you again because I wanted to do a new series of IT engineering skills. Now these aren't the typical skills that I would do that are specific to unified communications engineers or telecom engineers. These are skills that are broadly applicable to anyone that works in IT. I wanted to go ahead and kick this series off with a video about data manipulation using the VLOOKUP function in Excel. I personally use this formula all the time, along with other formulas in Excel, to manipulate data when migrating systems, or for many other use cases, as they come up on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm really excited to get started on this series. This is just the first of many, so please keep up to date and let me know if you find this informative, if you find this as exciting as I do. And uh, yeah, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, whatever platform we're on, you know, hit, hit like, hit subscribe, and, uh, and give me a comment. All right, so let's jump into this. So what we're gonna do is we're, we have two different spreadsheets, one has, uh, email address and phone numbers and extensions and this one we exported from our phone system. Now we also have exported from our HR system a list of all employees with their first names and their last names because for some reason our phone system couldn't export that you know. So what we need for our new phone system is combined data with the email, the first name, the last name, the phone number and the extension all in one spreadsheet. But doing this manually for, you know, a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand people, you know, that, that becomes fairly difficult. So we need a way to do this quickly. So what we're gonna use is the V lookup. It's a vertical lookup in Excel, and it's going to allow us to reference multiple spreadsheets as long as we have some sort of matching data in both of these spreadsheets, which we do. We have the email addresses. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our HR export, which is our source of truth for people in our organization. And we're going to first come over here and we're gonna say our email is going to equal A2. And then how many do we have? All the way down to 31. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna grab this bottom corner and we're just gonna drag it down to 31. So we have 30 entries, right? And so now you can see that we have all these email addresses in here and they match the HR export. So now that I have my source information, what I need to make sure is that this source is our leftmost data in all of the tables that we're gonna reference. So if it's not already, we need to make sure the email address is over here. So if they were over here, we would need to copy and then insert copy cells over here, okay? Ours, we've already got that formatted. So first name, we're gonna go equals and we're gonna go VLOOKUP. We're gonna open that with a parentheses. Now it gives us an idea of how this formula is going to be formatted. Lookup value is what we just put in the email addresses. That's our lookup value. We're gonna be referencing that in each of those other tables. And then it's gonna ask for the table array. The table array is that other table, all of the columns in that other table that we need to reference. Starting with that leftmost email address in this case. The third thing is gonna be the column index number of what we're trying to get. So in this case, it's the first name. So, uh, it'll be the column index in that table, in that reference table, that has the first name. And then finally, the range lookup is going to be either a true or false if we're looking for an approximate match or an exact match. True being approximate, false being exact, and we're always going to be looking for an exact match. So let's go ahead and say our lookup value is going to be A2. So you see it already highlighted A2 here. We're going to say comma. Our table array for first name is going to be in our HR export. So we're gonna take this entire table. Now you see in our formula, it's already stated here, our, our tab is HR export. And now we're just gonna grab this whole table here. We're gonna highlight the whole thing. Okay, 
We're gonna come back up to our formula and put comma. The index number for first name. Okay, so this is column one. First name is column two. Last name is column three. So first name is gonna be column two. And then finally, either approximate match or exact match. We're looking for an exact match. So we're gonna say false. Now we're gonna hit enter. So you can see first name Thomas matches the email address. And that's what we're looking for. So next, we're gonna do the same thing. If you look up, now I'm gonna go a little bit quicker here. Same thing, I'm gonna grab our table. I'm gonna say, this time we're in column three and false. And now we're gonna do the same thing for phone numbers. But of course, we're gonna reference the phone system export. So same thing, comma. Now, which one is our phone number in? It's in column two. And we still want an exact match. And same thing here. Look up a two table array from our phone system. Comma two and false. Oh no. Extension is column three and false. Now if I grab this and I were to pull it down all the way, we're going to get some funky errors because not only is that A2 source going to change, but also our tab is going to change. We want to make sure that this is an absolute value. It never, that means it never changes. And the way we do that is we add a dollar sign between the A and the 2, or before the A and the 2, and before the C, and before the 31. We're going to do that to all of them. A2 and C and 31, okay? Do the same thing here, A2 and C and 27, and then A2 and C and 27. All right, so that makes it absolute value. So now when we grab this and we pull it down, it's gonna pull down all the way. Now look, we have a couple that show up as NA. Why do they show up as NA? Is it, not, is it not able to find it? Well, as it turns out, our HR export has more people than we have in our phone system export. That's because some people just don't have phone numbers and that's okay. Now, if you're okay with the NA, you can just leave it. Otherwise, what we wanna do is between the equals and the V lookup, we wanna put if error, if I can spell right, put another parentheses and put the V lookup in its own parentheses, go to the end, Okay, so you see it's giving us the example, if error, value, comma, value, if error. Put a comma. We can just leave it blank and then close that formula. And now you see it just leaves us with a blank cell. Now we could say no phone number. Or we could say if we wanted to put in a generic office number or whatever you wanted to put in there or we could just leave it blank and then you could also do that same thing and just pull that same formula down it's not going to affect your VLOOKUPs but it is going to put a blank cell if there's an error so there you go that's it that's all there is to it you now know how to use the VLOOKUP function and the if error function in Excel for data manipulation to combine multiple different spreadsheets together into one spreadsheet. You can use this and you probably will use this all the time now that you know how to do it. So yeah, if you found this informative, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, give me a like, uh, subscribe and keep up to date. Um, thanks for watching and uh, Hey, let's, let's start a discussion down in the comments.